Welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast, where we share all kinds of tips, advice, and interview guests on all things innovation and leadership in modern marketing. Each episode is a conversation with inspiring people who make wonderful contributions to our knowledge in these areas and spark curiosity and ideas to pursue. Join me, Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and let's get into today's masterclass on this InnovaBuzz podcast. We've got a lot of problems to solve in the world, right? And so the more that we can elevate a diversity of ideas and people and voices and stories, the more we can find solutions to those problems or people who need solutions can find the exact person that they really need to help them with their desires, their goals, their unfulfilled uh, needs, whatever it might be. So uh, I, I guess it would just be to realize, like, so look, the world needs your, your voice as well. And if any of this stuff has resonated with you and, and, you know, for whatever reason, maybe you haven't put yourself out there to start sharing your perspective or story, just know that, that, that we need it. We need more of that stuff. And so there's never been a better opportunity to, to do it. Hi there, Innovator. It's really great to be back with another episode of the Innova Buzz podcast, and I certainly hope that your week so far has been awesome. I trust also that you enjoyed my recent conversations with Murray Streets from BC&F Dentsu and with Justin Blackman of Pretty Fly Copy. Today, I'm really excited to welcome to the Innova Buzz podcast as my guest, Jason Van Orden who works with thought leaders to turn their expertise into a digital platform that inspires their audience. He helps them package their wisdom and market it to the people who really need it. Jason is also a longtime podcaster, and his latest podcast is Impact, How to Grow Your Thought Leadership Brand and Business, and he's recently just launched that one. A quick promotional message from our sponsor, that's InnovaBiz, where we help coaches and consultants build professional credibility, engage their target audience and connect with their ideal client. That requires absolute clarity about who your ideal clients are and how you can help them. To help you get that clarity about your ideal client, take a look at our Marketing Master Mini Class, where in less than 30 minutes, you'll gain absolute clarity on your ideal client and how you can communicate with them to build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship. Access the Marketing Master Mini Class at innovabiz.co forward slash marketing master. It's completely free and accessible without even giving away your email. In our discussion today, Jason talked to me about what marketing his rock band and his various businesses and his podcasts all have in common, getting a clear message to the right audience. He shared with us lessons from the launch of his latest podcast, and he explained how you can leverage a small list through joint ventures. Without further ado then, let's fly into the hive and get the buzz from Jason Van Orden. Hi, I'm your host, Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm really excited to welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast today from New York in the USA, Jason Van Orden, who's a business and marketing strategist for expert influencers. Welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast, Jason. It's a great privilege to have you as my guest. Awesome. Thanks, Jürgen. I'm so glad to be here. Sandy Everleth, who was our guest on episode 244 of the Innova Buzz podcast, suggested that we make contact with you and introduced us and suggested you'd be a good guest for the podcast. So big hello to Sandy. I know she listens in from yeah. time to time. Sandy's great. Yeah. Jason, you work with thought leaders, business owners, and entrepreneurs to launch and grow businesses that allow them to serve more people make their mark, earn more income with their ideas, expertise, and their story, and also build a lifestyle that that they aspire to. And I know you also host a new podcast called Impact, How to Grow Your Thought Leadership Brand and Business. So I'm really looking forward to digging into the background of thought leadership and how that podcast came about with you today. But before we start talking about all things business growth and podcasting and thought leadership, 
give us a little bit of a snapshot of your background. I know you've had a, a long history in internet marketing. So how did you get to where you are today and what were some of the key moments in that journey? So, okay, yeah, my it's a little bit of a, a winding path, but it's interesting. <laughs> it's always interesting to look back and see how you ended up somewhere, right? I actually started out as an engineer by trade, you know, went to college and got the engineering degree to do the good old, you know, work for a corporation responsibly, quote unquote, responsibly and, and mm. retire one day. But it didn't take long for me to realize that I was not cut out for that corporate type uh, work. And so I started looking around for other things that I might do to get out of that job and find a you know, different path in life. And uh, about the same time, I was also in a rock band. And mm -hmm. in that rock band, you know, we were producing and recording CDs. We had shows that we did live. And I realized I needed to learn something about marketing if I wanted people to show up to my shows, if I wanted people to buy my yeah, CDs. Yeah. And that's where I was first introduced to marketing and particularly online marketing, you know, websites and email marketing and things like that. And I soon realized, oh, I'm, I'm pretty good at this marketing stuff and I actually quite enjoy it as well. And so what ended up happening is I, I eventually found myself consulting people about doing, as a marketing consultant, helping people with direct marketing, helping them with uh, you know, mailing sequences in the physical mail, like actually sending sequences in the mail. Uh, I worked in the industry of real estate investing for quite some time and because that was something I was dabbling in myself. And uh, what, what ended up happening after that is that in, in my efforts as a, as a marketing consultant, I soon came across this idea of, you know, what, what is often referred to as information marketing. So, you know, with one-on-one -on -one services, of course, you're limited by your time and energy. But if you record a course and you put together a package that you can then sell to anybody uh, anywhere, that, that opens up a lot more possibilities about, you know, who you can work with and your income, the ceiling on your income goes up. So, this in like 2000, so we're talking, you know, 2000 to 2003, I was doing marketing with my band. 2004, I put on a seminar and this was how, you know, I've been going to seminars to learn about marketing. Like, why can't I do my own seminar? So hmm. I did like a seminar workshop one day, 25 people I got into that seminar by sending out a sequence of three mailings. Um, in fact, one of them, like I went on a trip to Paris and I sent postcards to, I had a mailing list of like 80 people that I had gotten off of um, a, a local real estate investors association. So I'm sending like stuff through the mail to get people to this workshop. And I managed to get 25 seats there. I charged $200 a person and I made $5,000 in one day and a huge light bulb went off. And I was like, okay, this is great. I love this. I love teaching. I love helping people with marketing. This is great because there's only so many people I can work with here locally and I'm feeling limited by my time and energy. So now I've got a course. I recorded that workshop. I put it onto six CDs. I was actually burning it out of my computer. You know, I had a CD burner in my computer and <laughs> I took my slides from the presentation and I printed that onto paper, put it in a three ring binder. And now I had a course that I could sell online. Um, well, and I went online because, you know, again, I used my network to sell it locally, but that tapped out pretty quickly. So I was like, okay, great. The internet's going to let me sell this marketing course to more people. And it was a marketing course specifically for real estate uh, investors. So at the time, you know, there's no video, there's no social media, there's none of that stuff. I was posting on forums, like informational articles. And at the bottom in my byline, I said, I've got this course if you're interested. And every once in a while, I'd get, uh, I'd get a sale and I'd burn off the six CDs, I print off the mail, the, and I go to the post office, and I'd send it off to the person. And so that was the beginning of my information marketing, online marketing uh, career at that time. I was looking for other ways to market this course. And that's when I discovered podcasting at 2000, in 2005. The word showed up in a newsletter, an e email newsletter I was subscribed to. So I went and Googled podcasting, like, what is this podcasting thing? And uh, Google came back and said, did you mean like Google tried to correct me because Google had no <laughs> yeah. idea what yeah. podcasting was, right? And so I was reading blog posts and, and I finally pieced together what podcasting was all about. Because I was an engineer, a software engineer, I understood the technical side. You know, because I was a musician, I understood the audio side. And mm -hmm. my marketing business mind was looking at this going, okay, this is going to be significant. We can like, this is good for marketing. It's good for education. It's good for communication. This is really cool. I'm excited. So I decided to start uh, a couple of podcasts. I started one about podcasting, my journey in podcasting as I was discovering this. And, and then I uh, started another one with a friend of mine about internet marketing and internet business. And that was the first podcast ever about internet marketing and online entrepreneurship. 
And so those two shows both ended up becoming businesses and brands for me. My podcast, my podcast about podcasting uh, was found by a publisher who came to me and said, would you write a book for us? So I wrote a book called Promoting Your Podcast because um, nobody had written a book about that at the time. And this was the first time anybody had talked about, here's how in iTunes or Apple you can get you know, good optimization and visibility. And then over here, my internet marketing podcast with my, my friend, Jeremy, we, you know, lots of people started listening because there wasn't any other podcast about internet marketing. And so soon that turned into a business with coaching and courses, helping beginning entrepreneurs get started on the internet. And my other podcast led to a brand of me speaking internationally about podcasting and consulting people and businesses about how to start podcasts. So I had these two businesses that, that were going and eventually I had to put the podcasting one aside. I focused on internet business mastery and that went on for another 10, 11 years uh, 12 years in total, millions of downloads, top-ranked podcast, and sold a lot of, of courses through that business. A few years ago, I decided to change it up, and uh, I started consulting. And I was, you know, found I was really interested in helping what I would call you know, thought leaders or aspiring, aspiring thought leaders, people with a message, a story, a perspective, and expertise that they want to get out there bigger in the world. So that's what I've been doing the last few years, is I've been consulting and teaching workshops to help you know, existing consultants and coaches and speakers and authors and academics and people like that who who they want a, a bigger reach, a bigger following. They want new income streams. And so I, I'm teaching them the the ropes. And when it comes to Internet, uh, how, how to use the Internet to get your message out there and create new uh, streams of, of revenue. So that's a, a summary of the my 15 year career yeah. of, as an Internet marketer, a podcaster, a consultant and so forth. And now here we are. Yeah, that's right. On another podcast. Um, yeah, I, I love that for so many things. And it's interesting, a lot of um, my guests, when they answer that question, say, oh, it's been a very uh, windy, long and winding road and right. no real, um, no real um, strategy or anything to it. But when you think back, and, and a lot of the people, obviously, that I have on my show are, are really you know, great at what they do and um, uh, have achieved an awful lot. So they they do have some visions mm -hmm. of where they might want to go. So when when you kind of reflect back on it like that, it does look like a, a pretty strategic path in some ways. Right. And I guess yeah. some of the themes for me there were, you know, get, getting involved early on in podcasting, even before Google recognized it as a search <laughs> term. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. All right. Now, um, so what were some of the lessons you learned back in, in, that, um, in those days of marketing for the rock band to get people to show up for the shows mm. that you then took into, let's say, yeah. the podcasting or, or that first workshop you did? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to, to my band, what I learned there, I mean, that's a really, you know, that's an interesting one. It's always hard for an artist to talk about their, their art, right? Everyone wants to feel mm. like, you know, their art is, is special and can't be described. But that one of the first things I learned there is, you know, I needed to be able to describe my music and what I did in a way that people could quickly decide if it was for them or not. So that the people who would be interested could say yes, and everyone else, they might just say no, but that's okay. They just weren't into that kind of music. So hmm. I, you know, just to, and this applies to any marketing and business, right? So I finally figured out if I told people, and I don't know if these, I don't know if these band names are going to mean anything to, to people listening, but uh, this is the early 2000s, a lot of alternative rock and guitar rock. So I said, yeah, we're like the band Incubus if we had Gwen Stefani of No Doubt as a singer and Flea of Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers as a bassist. And people who liked alternative music could immediately go, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. That sounds cool. I'll come and check it out, right? So that was a big lesson I learned there is you, you got to find out like what's, you know, that positioning that you can have in the marketplace and be able to describe yourself in a way that your target market will go like, okay, yeah, that's for, that's for me or no, thank you. Uh, that's, that, that's not for me, right? Hmm. When it came to the workshops, the, the big thing that I, I learned there was the importance of having you know, a sequence, a, a promotional sequence, you know, so often when we bring something new to the marketplace, whether it's a course or a, a coaching consulting offer or service or whatever it is, you know, we throw a social media post out there, we throw an email or two out there and we're like, hey, I've got this thing. And yeah, maybe we know we got to talk about the benefits and, and tell people how they'll, uh, you know, how we're going to change their lives or their business or whatever the case may be. But, you know, the reason I was able to get 25 people and fill that workshop is because I put together a very careful sequence where there was multiple touch points talking about uh, talking about my my workshop right and so you know it was it was uh, you know a postcard 
Uh, you know, there was a, a handwritten letter that actually wasn't handwritten, but it was printed to look like it was handwritten. Hmm. Um, you know, there was another one that was just a, like, like a standard printed out letter. And, you know, each one kind of touched on different value propositions or different benefits of the workshop if they came to it. And so, you know, every time I sent out another mailing piece, I got a few more signups. So it, it really is important to have multiple follow-ups and to change it up as you go through that sequence because different people will respond to different things. And obviously, sometimes people have to see something multiple times before they uh, before they say yes. But the biggest thing I learned is like, wow, I can actually do this. People will pay for my knowledge and I can get paid well to teach, which is something I, I loved doing. I just never, I didn't want to go become an academic because I was just going to end up in another system I wasn't going to be yeah. happy with, right? Mm. But here was a way I could use one of my strengths and talents teaching and, and actually enjoy it and get paid well to do it at the same time. So those are, those are a few lessons I picked up uh, along the mm. way now. Yeah, and that multiple touch point message is really important, particularly today in social media, where a lot of people, um, you know, do social media promotion and email promotion. And we all, I mean, there's so much noise on social media, and we all get hundreds or more emails every day. So that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff gets lost in the in the social media feed or in the email inbox. So it's important right. to send those messages out multiple times and hope that people see it. The other thing that struck me about your story on the workshop is you had a list of 80 people. Mm. So, you know, people today, they seem to be chasing, you know, grow your list, grow your list at all costs. So get a big list. And until you've got a big list, you can't actually start doing anything else. Right. And, you know, clearly what you had was a, a, a small list, but a list that was probably a lot more targeted to the people that were interested in what your offer was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know what, it, it, the interesting thing is it wasn't even actually my list, but because I didn't have a list, I'm like, well, how can I reach people who would be interested in this? And I had been involved with the local real estate investors, like meetup or association, right? It's just like a, a club, basically, hmm. that would meet on a regular basis. And I knew that they had a database of 80 people that, you know, they had their mailing addresses and, and email addresses and stuff like that. So I just went and did a joint, you know, a joint venture deal with them. I said, look, if you let me promote to this list, I will give you a percentage of the profits that will help support the organization and give you some funds for that. And they said, okay, yeah, sure. We'll do that. So, you know, as creative and how I, and how I acquired the, the list, you know, one reason why that worked a few reasons why that worked so well is like you said, it was very, very targeted. So this was a marketing seminar for real estate investors. You know, how can they use direct mail to find buyers and sellers and put deals together? So it was a very targeted crowd that would be interested in that. The other thing is I actually already had a relationship with people on this list because I had mm -hmm. been volunteering and helping out with the Real Estate Investors Association. And I actually had been going to the meetings and presenting little marketing tips at each meeting. So people had already seen me and gotten value from my content, so to speak. I mean, this is all like in the real world at the time, right? Me speaking at a meeting, me sending physical mail to them to yeah. promote the thing, but it's all the same stuff that we do today. You create a value, create content to have a footprint online. You're very targeted about who you want to reach. And um, you know, when you put a, an offer that just resonates perfectly with what that pain point is, and that's the other thing is I actually talked to people in the real estate association saying like, well, what is it that you're struggling with most? And they said, well, we're having a really hard time finding I know how to do the deals and I make a lot of money when I do the deals, but I don't have enough buyers and sellers. So that's when I knew it was like, oh, they're having trouble with marketing and I can teach them all this good stuff that will help them, you know, be more effective at that. So, you know, th those are all the things that played into me, you know, at getting 25 of 80 people to say yes to my offer at, at the time. And now we have all the same analogs online. It's all done with email and, you know, we can do joint ventures and stuff mm. like that. But um, those, those are the principles that really helped it work for me at the time. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. There's a lot, lot to unpack there, and uh, but I think you know you, you've touched on several really key points there in terms of knowing what audience you're serving and what what that audience needs, mm -hmm. and then focusing on actually listening to them and focusing on addressing the needs that you hear um, coming from that audience. Yeah, so absolutely. I guess one, yeah, one of the questions. I was going to open up with was, why is it important to stand out as a thought leader or an influencer? Mm -hmm. And I think you've probably just given us an example of why <laughs> that might be. So do you have any other comments on that? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, when, when you, you know, whether your motivations are to, uh, you know, make more money or have a certain lifestyle or have certain opportunities or make a certain impact in the world or some combination of all those things, 
when you have a recognizable personal brand that people, you know, they see you as a, a you know, a very specific audience and marketplace that you want to help sees you as a go-to person on, you know, something that's related to the pains and goals and problems that they have in front of them, it just makes it a lot easier for people to say yes, right? And like, there's so many things that I've, I've uh, you know, in my own stories that I've shared here about the benefits of thought leadership. You know, when I started my podcast about podcasting, that started positioning me as somebody in the know about this new medium of podcasting, right? And so the publisher showed up and said, would you like to write a book? That wouldn't have happened had I not been putting myself out there, hmm. you know, with my ideas as, as an expert. Um, if I hadn't been going to the meetings of the Real Estate Investors Association and sharing value, all those people wouldn't have looked to me as an expert at the time on direct marketing and wouldn't have been as likely to say yes. You know, when Internet Business Mastery, my other podcast started taking off and making money, it was because they were listening to our stories and connecting with us and they found our information helpful. They resonated with me and my co-host. They liked, you know, we were very likable and in the way we just talked like everyday people about our experiences. And they actually started asking us, do you guys coach? Can you, we want to work with you. Can you please teach us more than just what's in the podcast? And so we had to, you know, we launched a, a coaching program at that time. And these things, all these things happen because of that established thought leadership brand where you know we're recognized as experts, the trust is in place, and then people are ready to say yes or offer you opportunities because of that positioning you already have as an expert in your market. Hmm. All right, that's fabulous, and and you know clearly your journey. I think your journey. You know, you mentioned earlier that it was a little convoluted and it wasn't strategic or planned, but I think the thought leadership uh, aspect of it was there right from the beginning, and that was probably what opened up a lot of opportunities and then you then you kind of picked opportunities that matched yeah. what you love doing and what was a good yeah. fit for where you could serve people so i think that Absolutely. that probably was another is another key point about thought leadership it does kind of lay out a, a path with opportunities and and if you reflect back on the path that many people have traveled down it kind of looks as though they've done you know, some very strategic things. And it probably comes back to that thought leadership aspect. Yeah. And there's, there's that through line all the way through of me sharing my knowledge about marketing. Right. But it went from like a consultant to real estate investors, mm. to uh, an expert author and speaker about podcasting, to a podcaster and teacher about internet business and internet marketing, and now a brand and digital marketing strategist for thought leaders. You know, so I've reinvented myself along mm. the way based on my own needs and goals and also to change it up for my own interest and fulfillment. But there's that through line of my, you know, interests and strengths and things that I wanted to bring to, to the world. The target market might have changed, you know, changed throughout yeah. there mm. based on my goals. But yeah, I've always been able to make things happen by focusing on adding value, bringing, you know, immense value to a specific market as, a, as, a, as an expert, as a thought leader. Mm. All right. Well, let's talk about your new podcast, the impact podcast how to grow your thought leadership and well brand and business so what prompted you starting that you mentioned a moment ago about changing things up so yeah yeah so uh i, I haven't had a podcast for a few years and that's because i've just been focused on on other things um you know i, I dove into you know entrepreneurs we get a little bit uh um, restless for, for other mm. things. Right. And so that's why after 12 years of doing that other podcast, I said, yeah, I need to take a little break and, and try some other things out. But, uh, you know, I've spent the last few years doing some really close consulting with thought leadership based businesses and seeing what their problems are. What are they facing? What are the questions they're asking? Where can I, uh, bring the greatest value and all that time, you know, I'm picking up all, I'm learning all this stuff about the marketplace and I'm coming up with solutions and I'm creating courses and I'm creating systems and I'm creating frameworks and worksheets and templates and, and models to help solve the problems that these thought leader, uh, that these thought leaders run into as they try to uh, scale things out. So it just finally got to the point here that I, I wanted to go beyond, I was ready to go beyond just that close work I was doing inside of other people's businesses. And so, um, you know, any any good uh anybody who wants to establish that kind of a wide personal brand you got to make content you have to have you know at least one good channel that you're just consistently showing up 
creating a, a great content that people will follow. And so I already had all the experience in podcasting. I was really missing it. So I decided, <laughs> okay, great. Time to start a podcast and share all of these things that I've been learning and developing and refining over the last few years. Now I need a channel to share them in a much bigger arena. And so it was time. That, that's why I launched the podcast. I called it Impact because you know I really like focusing on working with people who I love helping people make more money, but I really love working with people who, you know, th they have a goal and a vision to really bring something to the world in addition to making money. And in fact, that vision and that impact that they want to have might even be as or even more important than the money that they want to make. So I, I put the emphasis and focus on that. But as you said, with the, the subtitle of the show, how to grow your thought leadership uh, business and brand, it, you know, it is a business and marketing podcast. And so that's uh, that's what led me to launch that uh, recently. Mm. All right. Well, take us behind the scenes a little bit on the launch. So you know, you've you've run two very successful podcasts for a long time. You've uh, learned a lot about marketing at the same time. So how did you go about launching this new show, given all the experience you had under your belt? Yeah. So. Uh, you know, the first the first thing was just to to get very clear about who who the audience mm. is for for that show. If you don't know who your audience is, then you're going to be all over the place and or you know trying to to appeal to too many uh, people. You know, thankfully, again, with all that consulting I was doing, I'd become pretty clear on who it was that I wanted to reach. So, you know, some of those early decisions you got to make are okay. Well, what's going to? Why does this show matter? What's going to set it apart? I know now who I want to reach with the show, but. You know, I knew I was going to be in a business space and the marketing space, and there are a lot of podcasts in that space. Um, and that's great. I think a lot of voices and a diversity for, of voices are awesome. But, you know, you're going to drown if you don't in that whole sea of, of voices if you don't have something that that sets you apart mm -hmm. in your format uh, and who your target audience is. And, and so, so, you know, I spent a lot of time listening to to top podcasts even ones that weren't business based and just kind of thinking about okay what what's working well in, in you know in top podcasts right now in, in interview styles what kind of formats are working well what are some things that aren't being done that I could do with uh, you know that aren't being done in business podcasts that I could do and so I started brainstorming and coming up with uh, some ideas and I'll give a couple of, of examples one thing that I decided I wanted to do is I didn't want to just start and, and you know I, I mean as I say this I'm being interviewed by somebody but I I just decided that personally, I didn't want to start a show that was just going to be an interview show. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with interview shows; those are great because you know that's a, a great way to uh, connect with people and help you know give to other people a platform. But I just decided that was a place that I wanted to switch it up. So I decided that you know a lot of my episodes were going to be solo episodes, and that if I did bring people on, it would be. And, and I love that you know before we got on live here, you're like this is going to be more of like a conversation, right? Um, which is which is great, and I you know I'll, I'll probably have other people on my show, but I've you know I decided I want it to be a little more of like a roundtable. Maybe I'll have a roundtable of three or four people to talk about uh, you know a particular topic and get a bunch of perspectives on a very specific topic. But um, but two things that I have already done in my first uh, two episodes. Number one is I decided I wanted every episode to have an actionable framework that went along with it, meaning I would teach a principle or an idea. But then there would be like a template or a worksheet or a model or something that people could download and put it into action right away. So keep the podcast very actionable. And it has that extra benefit of it builds my list because every episode I'm saying, okay, would mm -hmm. you like the template that goes yeah, with this episode? Yeah. Go to this URL right now and sign up for my newsletter and I'll send it to you immediately. A second thing I decided to do, um, I did this in my second episode, was to share real world coaching calls of me coaching people about the principles that I talk about in the episode. So you actually get to hear a real world business and, and how it gets applied to that, to that particular business. Of course, I get permission um, with that, but you know, I, being able to be a fly on the wall of, of hearing somebody yeah. else being coached through the same kinds of things you might be struggling with just seemed like it'd be really valuable for people to hear. So that was another format thing I hadn't seen really done much. And so I decided to, so I'm just giving a couple examples of like, okay, what can I do to like set my format apart and maybe do something a little bit uh, interesting with, uh, with my show. But then, you know, it's, it's the, it's the production and you, you record it and we don't have enough time to go through all that. But in terms of actual launching of it, one interesting thing that I did is I put out on social media um, a month or two ago, uh, a couple of months ago, and I said, "Hey, my, I have a new podcast coming up. I'm still, you know, I'm still getting it recorded and putting all the pieces together, but I'm looking for a launch team." 
And so when you sign up for the launch team, I will send you the first two episodes in advance of everybody else. I will give you a behind the scenes look at how I launched the podcast and I'll do a special webinar just for you about content marketing and strategy. And then, and then you'll also get these frameworks before for everybody else. And then, you know, a lot of people wanted to help out just because they had followed my previous podcast and decided. So, you know, I got, I got a good handful of people just set up a free Google form and people filled that out. And, uh, and so I was, you know, sending out and getting feedback, early feedback from this launch team. And I got some really good feedback that then actually ended up changing the, the show at the official launch time. And then, you know, when it's, when it became time to actually launch the show, when they signed up for the launch team, I said, Hey, will you be willing to do one of these five things, you know, share it with two or three friends or, um, uh, leave a rating and review in iTunes because that's really you know important or Apple Podcasts it's called now. Um, you, you know, would you be willing to put it out on your your social media to give me feedback? And I'm forgetting what the fifth thing was. I said, can you just choose three of these five things you'd be willing to do when I launch the show? And so then people were committing to what they would be willing to uh, help out with. So putting that launch team together, what that does. I mean, of course, I have my email list, I have my social media, but having that you know, group of people, I think I had maybe 30 or 40 people who are ready the day it goes, you know, live to, to help out with promoting it, just kind of build some extra mm -hmm. buzz early on. And one of the best things you can do when you launch a new podcast is to get a lot of people subscribing and rating and reviewing inside of Spotify and Apple Podcasts, which are the two big ones right now. And then that just kind of helps, you know, the hope is that it helps push you up in the, and you, you, you end up showing up in like the um, you know, some of the featured slots inside yeah. of the rankings and stuff. And so that's, uh, that's another thing that I did with the launch that might be helpful to anybody else who has a, and you know, you, it doesn't have to be when you're launching a new podcast, you could even do like, you know, you could even just get a team, even, even with your podcast, it's been going a while, mm -hmm. right? You can say, Hey, I'm doing a special promotional campaign. I'd love to have, you know, 20, 30 people help me out with this, give them some reasons why and benefits for helping you out. And then just kind of do a focused campaign in a week to really kind of promote and push your um, podcast up. So uh, that was my launch team strategy that I used. Mm. Yeah, I love that launch team strategy. I might steal that idea. <laughs> Perfect. Do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so I also like the um, the idea of doing a live coaching on the call. So is that kind of semi scripted? Or is that a genuine coaching call that you after the fact you sort of say to the person, you know, is it okay if we use this for a podcast episode? So it's agreed upon in advance, but it isn't totally scripted. So what I, every once in a while, something that I do anyway, is I'll go out to my list and say, hey, I have two spots for free 30 minute coaching calls on this specific topic. And I'm looking for this specific kind of person that I would like to work with. If you'd like to be considered for one of these spots, please fill out this short form. And mm -hmm. then again, you can use a Google form or something like that. So people go and they fill that out. And I ask specific questions. Like for instance, at one point I said, I want to help somebody who's struggling with their messaging. You know, they want more clarity in their messaging. They're having a hard time, you know, figuring something out with it. And, you know, I want this to be somebody who already has an existing existing business. So, you know, when they're filling out the form, they're, they're answering some questions so I can quickly filter anyone out that doesn't fit that description. Mm -hmm. And then I'm having, I, you know, I ask a, a couple open-ended questions like, okay, so tell me about what's going on right now, what you're struggling with, what you'd like my help with. And so then I'm able to go through and look at 20, 30 different applications that come in and pick out ones. I'm like, okay, this will be a good one. This will, you know, it'll appeal to, to a, a wide, you know, segment of my audience. I can definitely in a short amount of time, get this person some, some good ideas and results. And, you know, at the end of that form, it's, they know that it's like, would you be willing for me to record this and use it in content in the future, potentially my podcast or otherwise? And they either say yes or no. Um, so the permission is up is in advance. They know that if you know they're chosen, that it's going to be for that. So I'm not going into it totally blind. Um, and then I even you know often what I'll do before recording is I might send them an email with some more questions, so I have more information. Do a little early legwork to make sure I have all the info I need, so we can get right to mm -hmm. really um, you know get down to brass tacks and, and stuff like that. But then it's a genuine coaching call, right? Like they've they you know, I'm, I'm helping them on their business. They have no idea what I'm going to tell them. In fact, often I don't know. know I, I might have some ideas, but often I don't know what's going to come up in the call as we're just talking through things. I'll have an idea that comes to me. And, um, you know, by the end, we, they walk away with a couple, uh, you know, actionable things that they're excited to go and put into, into action. So that, that's how it works out with the, the live um, coaching recordings that I use on my podcast. Okay. That's fascinating. So they're not 
they're not actually existing clients that you work with, but you do put in as much effort as if it was a new client that you were basically onboarding and getting to know their business and getting to know their challenges and then genuinely having that half hour consultation. Yep, absolutely. And often it ends up being, you know, maybe 40, 45 minutes and I'm fine with that. And you know, mm. it gives, if it, as long as it's interesting stuff, I may edit it up a little bit just to keep it like tight and, and, uh, and more concise, but all the meat of the conversation is in there. I imagine at some point I'll ask an existing client, you know, if there's something I know I want to talk about on the show and I have an existing client that I'm working with on that, I'll probably go to the existing client first and say, Hey, would you like to do this? But, uh, at that time I didn't have somebody with that, that very specific thing, um, that I knew I could help out. So that's why I put it out to my list and said, okay, I've got some free spots who would like, who would like these free spots. Mm -hmm. And how far in advance do you line up these episodes? So the, the coaching calls, obviously there's a fair bit of preparation time involved in that, but what about the different style of episodes you've, you've got planned? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with this launch of the new show, I, I had two or three months thinking about this and prepping stuff. So I'll admit like I've been pretty, well planned out up till now but you know now that it's launched i need to get to having that third episode out and i haven't i know what it's going to be about but i haven't even totally necessarily like <laughs> put it all together yet right so in an ideal world and i will get to to this point you know the, these things are being scheduled out and recorded a month or two in advance of them going out uh, I don't like to do them too far in advance. I mean, I know batching them is a more efficient thing, but then at the same time, I kind of like to keep my show a little bit, you know, nimble and able to mm. adjust it to the feedback that's coming in. Right. And if I've recorded three months of shows and I decide I want to, you know, I guess you can always insert stuff later, but so I'm still working in terms of how far in advance, you know, I'm still getting some of those systems all put together for this, uh, this, this new show, but the, the ones I talked about there, yeah, I mean, it was a couple of months ago when I, because uh, I wasn't actually sure how they would turn out either, right? So I'm like, I want to do this yeah. now so that if it doesn't work out, yeah. Yeah. I can pivot and do something different instead. Um, but yeah, for those coaching calls, I'm I'm definitely going to need to be at least a month, maybe two months in advance, I think, for, for them to go well. Hmm. Okay. Now, in terms of coming back to the other podcast you did about podcasting, um, how did you go about that? I mean, was it a lot of storytelling in that? Here's, you know, here's what I've learned in in the podcasts that I've done and here's why that's important and and then relate a story or how did you do that? Yeah, with with it was called the Podcasting Underground. <clears throat> and with that podcast and really the Internet Business Mastery podcast as well, the format was very much, you know, like you're going on this journey with me. So the podcasting one, you know, I was continually like reading new stuff that was coming out, trying new things, you know, here are the things I'm running into. I was going, I started going to conferences. And so then I do a show like here are the, some of the new, you know, podcasting tech that, you know, or when iTunes finally, when Apple finally made their directory, a lot of people think Apple invented podcasting. Mm -hmm. They didn't, but you know, when they, I mean, like a year and a half into it, when they're like, oh, we should have a podcast directory, you know, yeah. it's like, okay, let's talk, I'll talk about that on the show too, because so I was just you know, always keeping up on it and, and what I was applying to my shows, just talking about that. And then, you know, sometimes people would send me emails with questions. And so I go, oh, yeah, I should do an episode on that. I can talk about that as well. But it very much had this feeling of you're going on this journey with me. So yeah, it was storytelling in the sense that I was talking about my own experience quite a bit. And, um, you know, I, I was just like, look, I'm, you know, I'm figuring some of this stuff out too. podcasting is brand new or with internet business mastery, you know, I was like, yeah, I've been doing this a few year and years and I'm making money at it, but it was just, I had a co-host for that one. And we decided to do that one because we were already having phone calls with like kind of a two person mastermind talking about what we were doing, what was working. He was making money on eBay. So we just went with a format of, okay, let's record these conversations. And of course we started getting a little more focused. It's like, okay, today let's talk about topic X. But it was very much like this back and forth between us and he might share a story and then I'd teach a couple things and, you know, we, we found that that rapport. But I think that's why people found it appealing because at the time it was a lot of like gurus teaching internet marketing and suddenly mm -hmm. there were these two normal guys just telling their story and experience on this new thing called podcasting and I think that's why it grew and, and did so well. Yeah, and I think some of those some of that for the appeal of that format is it's very transparent. It's not 
like you know you must do this you must do that here's the recipe yeah. this is you know here's here's proof of my success you know the the whole kind of idea of the internet marketing promotional videos where the guy's standing in front of this <laughs> yeah. expensive car yeah. or expensive <laughs> yacht or expensive aircraft yeah. and you know giving the impression that you do things like i do and then you too can have that um it's it's much more around you know we did this that didn't work we did this that actually yeah. worked so you know and then we tried this other thing and that didn't work so people kind of relate to that and say well that that's a lot more transparent and genuine and whilst you're very successful in what you do you're actually sharing the ups and downs yeah totally yeah totally i mean we talk about mistakes and we would um, share that side as well and sometimes be like yeah we don't have all the answers so mm. you know but to the best of our knowledge this is what has has worked and yeah that really appealed yeah. to people absolutely hmm all right. Well, I could uh, keep going on podcasting and, and how to promote podcasts, but you've given us some really great ideas and I'm aware of the time. So I think it's a good point to move on to the buzz, which is our innovation round. And it's designed to help our audience who are primarily leaders and innovators in their field to um, get some experience from your tips or tips from your experience. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. And um, I've got five questions. Hopefully you'll give us some really insightful answers that'll inspire the listener to go and do something awesome today as a result. Oh, love it. This is exciting. I'm ready. Let's hear the questions. Yeah. All right. Now, what's the number one thing you think anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Oh, uh, I would say that, I mean, two things immediately come to mind, but one is you need to be constantly giving yourself raw fuel for innovation, meaning reading, keeping up on magazines, and not just stuff in your lane, in your niche, right? Like mm. when you get on an airplane, go into the bookstore and and choose three magazines at random. And, and sometimes you're going to come across this thing in another industry. And I mean, that's what innovation is, right? It's combinatorial creativity where you're like mashing together different ideas. So uh, continual and, and varied input in your mind. And the other thing I was just going to throw in there is then being, you know, a spirit of curiosity and experimentation, just trying things out. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. And I love the idea. I mean, there's a lot of examples that you can think of where people have um, come up with something new in their industry. That's actually really just an adaption of what's been happening in another industry for a long, long right. time. Yeah. Yeah. There's all, all kinds of great examples of, of industries that were changed by something from a completely different industry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's a lot of reading. Okay. Let's talk about the curiosity thing because I just barely touched on that. I would say that my curiosity mm. is a, absolutely a compass for innovation and new ideas. I mean, we, going back to my story and how it felt like this zigzaggy path, the other through line there is I was just always following my curiosity. I was curious about podcasting, so I tried it out. You know, I was curious about real estate investing. I was curious about marketing and how to promote my band, right? So it's like curiosity led me to each of these stepping mm. points, right? And that ziggy, zigzaggy path is just following curiosity and experimenting along the way. And then you know, figure out, oh, I, actually, real estate investing isn't a great industry for me, but I sure love marketing and teaching. So let's keep going with that. Um, and so following my curiosity is the answer to that question. Hmm. All right. That's great. Yeah. And that's curiosity. I mean, I think entrepreneurial journey is just such a great learning experience. And I think being open to learnings and being curious about what's going on in in your world and and around you and in other areas is is really valuable. Do you have a favorite go to resource? Favorite go to resource. Well, you know, I right now I, I change up kind of the different ways I get input for that curiosity. Here, here's one that I'll, I'll just say right now. I, I just recently completely redid my Instagram feed. You know, I think I was following a lot of you know, a lot of other marketers and then entrepreneurs and I actually like removed a lot of that. And I, I, I was like, okay, what, what are some just like interesting feeds that I can follow on that'll just give me like, so I, you know, I found like a world economic forum, right. And Harvard business review. And I can't even name some other, like I found other ones that are just like here, rant, like they have random facts two or three times a day. Right. And so, um, but just knowing like setting up that channel. And so right now it's actually Instagram is an interesting one for me because I can get these really interesting quick hits on very, and then if I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know about that. And my curiosity gets peaked. I can go find mm. an article or I can go find more stuff to, 
to read about that. But that's that's what immediately comes to mind right now is, believe it or not, Instagram. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, well, that's fascinating because I always thought, oh, how does Instagram fit into this? I've, I've sort of been playing it with a little bit because I'm a hobby photographer. So I've been playing it around a little bit with my personal account and photography, posting photographs and following a whole lot of photographers, which basically is doing what you're saying, but in a very limited area because I see some interesting photography or interesting equipment so i follow some of the equipment suppliers and that piques my curiosity yeah. how i look at it but the, yeah that's a really interesting way to use it to kind of follow a whole range of different things and get some quick information snippets and chase chase down the rabbit holes if your curiosity is peaked absolutely yep hmm. all right now what's the best way to keep a project on track oh or a client on track Best way to keep a project on track. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the best person to ask. I mean, I, <laughs> I do a pretty good job because obviously I wouldn't get anything done if I wasn't uh, mm -hmm. so great. But um, I, I guess one of the things I know I have to do to keep a project on track, um, in fact, right before this recording this, I was on the, the, the subway and I was just kind of doing a brain dump of stuff into a, a document that then I can put into, you know, Asana. And this isn't going to be a thing about, ooh, have a to-do list, though, you know, that's, that's important mm -hmm. too. But the point I want to make here is get the stuff out of your brain. Don't manage the project in your brain. Don't, like, try to hold yeah. on to the things that need to be done. Or if, and if an idea comes to you, like, if I have an idea for a piece of content, I got to get it out of my brain and written down somewhere that I can reference it later quickly. So don't try to hold stuff in your brain. That would, that's, that's my best advice for keeping a project on track. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, I keep telling myself that's what you have to do. And then every now and then I get overwhelmed by all the post-it notes and loose bits of paper that I've got lying around on my desk. And I think I've got to, got to get this into one, back into one system. So yeah. That well, uh, that, that is important to have a, have a specific yeah. system for sure. That, that's the starting point <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Cause effectively it's still in my brain when there are bits of paper all over yeah, the place. Then you still gotta, <laughs> yeah. Remember those and pull them together. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 All right. Now, what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Mm. Uh, I will. It's interesting. I actually just did. I have a mastermind with uh, a dozen people in it, and this was exactly what we talked about this morning. And I gave quite a mm. few different things that they could go and do, but I'll, I'll name off a, a couple really quickly. Um, if it's in a thought leadership space and you're wanting to have a strong personal brand, it's find your voice. And what I mean by that is you got to know like what's I talk about this in my first episode of my podcast. It's like, what are the things that are really driving your work and that you can talk about that will give that unique perspective and, and give people something to really latch onto and resonate with? You know, I talk about the beliefs that drive my work and the vision um, that, that drives my work and why I do what I do beyond just wanting to make money. And then just, and there's a great book I'll just throw out there really quickly called Louder Than Words by Todd Henry, which is all about finding your voice. So I think that's really, really important if you're any kind of like creator. Um, another thing I'd say is to know your strengths. Um, a couple really great resources there. Strengths Finder is an assessment that you can take. Um, I also like uh, How the World Sees You. This is by Sally Hogshead, and she has an assessment called the Fascination Advantage Assessment. And it also gives you these really interesting insights into like, here's how you show up best in the world. And the things that you should emphasize to really create the greatest value and maybe the things that you should avoid because, and don't focus on your weaknesses, like double down on the things you're really good at. <laughs> yeah. So the more you know those strengths and you apply them, I think the better you can also uh, differentiate, differentiate yourself. So find your voice and know your strengths. Hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. I think self-awareness is a really important aspect of um, being yourself and, and differentiating so that you do add value to the people you serve and, and, Certainly the Strengths Finder of, um, and the Louder Than Words book, they're fa fabulous books. And I also love Sally Hogshead's work mm. on on the fascinating uh, Fascinator Advantage, I think it's called, mm -hmm. is it? Uh, yeah, that's not right. Mm. All right. Um, thanks, Jason. This has been really great. Now, where can people find out more about you and learn about your podcast, um, the Impact Podcast, and perhaps even reach out and say thank you for what you've shared with us today? Yeah. So jasonvanorden.com. 
uh, feel free to email me, jason at jasonvanorden.com. Uh, my last name is V-A-N-O-R-D-E-N. It's a good Dutch name if you need, want to know how to spell that. And then, yeah, the, the, <laughs> if you search for my name in iTunes or Spotify, you'll find the Impact Podcast. It'll pop up there and you can subscribe to that. So either come to my site and get on my newsletter list or, or subscribe to the podcast. And that'll, that's the best way to keep up on my latest uh, ideas and things that I'm sharing on these kinds of topics we've talked about today. Hmm. And as you mentioned earlier, there's a bunch of resource or there's a resource that goes with every podcast episode. And, mm, um, yeah. and when you download the resources, you get onto the newsletter list as well. Yep, absolutely. All right. So do you have a, a number one piece of advice you'd like to leave the listener with today, particularly in relation to being a leader in their field and a leader in innovation? Uh, let's see. Final piece of advice that I can give. Well, you know, I'll, here's here's something that I'll say. I don't know if this is advice, but I I hope it's a piece of like inspiration, and it, it has to do with the mm -hmm. why behind why why I do what I do. You know, if you think about 20 years ago, the big ideas on different topics would have all come from people with access to big media, right? So it'd be organizations and you know big media companies, and if you have to be published or be on the news or things like that, right? Now, fast forward with the internet, and you know, I've had so many amazing clients that have just had the, such interesting stories to share. You know, a, a client years ago, I helped to launch a podcast who was a mother of two who got had a very difficult pregnancy, got put on bed rest. It was, you know, it was a hard time. And then she wanted to start a podcast to share this story and then reached women all over the world. She would not have had a voice 20 years ago. It would have been some, you know, medical association that would have had anything to say about high risk pregnancy. But now that we've got the internet and all these, you know, podcasting, all these things, instead of that top down, we can have much more of this, you know, bottom up groundswell. And we've got a lot of problems to solve in the world, right? And so the more that we can elevate a diversity of ideas and people and voices and stories, the more we can find solutions to those problems or people who need solutions can find the exact person that they really need to help them with their desires, their goals, their unfulfilled uh, needs, whatever it might be. So uh, I, I guess it'd just be to realize like, so look, the world needs your, your voice as well. And if any of this stuff has resonated with you and, and you know, for whatever reason, maybe you haven't put yourself out there to start sharing your perspective or story, just know that, that, that we need it. We need more of that stuff. And so there's never been a better opportunity to, to do it. So that would be my, my parting words. Yeah, well, thanks for that. That's, that's fabulous. And I heard somebody said to me, and, and I thought this was a great, uh, a great way of looking at it, you know, when we talked about differentiation before, so you're one in a million because you are different and oh. you've got your own unique story, but there's 6 billion people on the planet. So if you work that out now, I can't do the maths in my head this quickly, but <laughs> yeah. there's got to be, there's got to be uh, over a million probably that are, are like you in some way. In other words, they've got the same issues that you've probably dealt with and solved right now. Yeah. And so if you can help those people, you're making a massive difference in the world. Yeah, totally. That's mm. what, yeah, I totally believe that. Yeah. All right. Well, um, finally then, Jason, who would you like me to um, chat with on a future and over Buzz podcast and why? Oh, wow. That's a that's a put me on the spot right there. Um, <laughs> future in a buzz. In a, in, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Here I got one. Um, so there's a, there's a good buddy of mine that uh, we have kind of a two person mastermind often just because I really like how how his mind works. Um, he's he's also he's very good at helping ideas spread and uh, has this whole thing about branding and making your ideas uh, more memorable and um, so yeah, his name's Michael Roderick. He writes a daily email. Um, that might seem crazy to write a daily email, but he's really, really mm -hmm. good at like taking everyday anecdotes and stories from his life and applying them to things that his readers will be interested in. Um, so the way he thinks, his his daily email list, which is really uh, interesting, I think he'd be somebody great to um, to talk to. And he also happens to be a really great connector who knows a huge variety of people. He's been a producer in Broadway. He's been uh, a teacher. He, you know, he's been a, a marketing consultant. He's done a lot of different things. He's got connections in tech and start in TV and media. So he's just a really interesting person in that uh, respect as well. So that's who I'd recommend you, you talk to. Okay. Well, thanks for that. We'll get an introduction to Michael from you and check out his daily Perfect. emails. Yeah. yeah I, I admire people that first of all can have the, consistency and dedication to do a daily mm -hmm. email and also those that can take 
those everyday stories that happen to them and, and turn them into a, a, something that's of meaning to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Jason. This has been fabulous. I've really enjoyed our conversation today and thanks for sharing your insights and your wisdom with us today. Uh, I wish you all the best for the future. I'll continue to listen to the Impact Podcast. L looking forward to oh, thank you. future episodes. And um, yeah, please keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity, Jürgen. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that engaging, insightful and informative conversation with Jason and took something away from what he shared with us today on this episode. I particularly like the idea of forming a launch team to help with a new product launch, even before the actual launch. It's minimum viable marketing at its very best. I'd love to know what you took away from Jason's episode. Leave a comment below the blog post, which you can find at innovabiz.co forward slash Jason Van Orden. That is J-A-S-O-N-V-A-N-O-R-D-E-N. -E all lowercase, all one word, innovabiz.co forward slash Jason Van Orden. You'll also find contact information for getting in touch with Jason there, as well as links to his website, to the Impact podcast, to his social media pages and the other resources that we mentioned in today's conversation. Jason suggested that we have a conversation with Michael Roderick of Small Pond Enterprises on a future InnovaBuzz podcast episode. So Michael, keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation from us to the InnovaBuzz podcast courtesy of Jason Van Orden. Remember to check out our Marketing Master mini class at innovabiz.co forward slash marketing master. It's completely free and accessible without even giving away your email. But most importantly, it will enable you in less than 30 minutes to gain absolute clarity about who your ideal client is and how you can communicate with them to build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship. And if you'd like our help to go even deeper into marketing mastery or our help with producing your very own podcast, even launching your very own podcast if you don't yet have one, then send me an email to jurgen at innovabiz.co and we can set up a quick call to have a short conversation and find out whether we're a good fit for one another. Tune in again to the next episodes of the Innova Buzz podcast, where again we've got some more fantastic guests lined up, including David Schreiner Khan of Smashing the Plateau and Kim Argett Singer, coach, writer, and entrepreneur. Stay connected with us by subscribing to the Innova Buzz podcast at innovabuzz.com forward slash subscribe. I N N O V A B U Z Z dot com forward slash subscribe. Make sure you never miss another episode. It would also mean a lot to me if you leave us a review because what you think matters. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions, or questions you have, so go ahead and share them in the comments below the blog post for this episode. Until next time, I'm Jurgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Remember, be awesome and keep innovating. Innovabiz.co